you know, after you go through um, a couple of failed marriages, then you can get very jaded towards marriage and feel like it doesn't work. I don't want to ever get married again. Forget yeah. it. I'm just giving me a little life partner and I'm just going to kick it for the rest of my life. Kick it. Uh, but she said you would never let her go into that space yeah. that you kept like throwing a life preserver. I'm going to call it a love preserver. <laughs> and kept throwing it out there and said, no, nah, baby, I ain't going to let you go there. I don't let. Why? Why was that important? One, because I knew she was a wife. Ooh. Oh, and Lord Jesus. Because I knew she was a wife. <laughs> I am not going to cry. Oh, God, I, dog. I, God, God doesn't give us gifts that he mm. doesn't intend for us to use. And being a wife is actually a gift of God, is a gift that we are, we've been given. Not everyone has been given that gift. And it's not because, not to some detriment to you if you haven't been, but I always knew that she was a wife. And what I knew was that I wasn't going to let the gift of her wifehood be diminished because of a wound. Love is a treasure chest, but once opened, our hearts become vulnerable. I, I went back to Vegas. It was this guy. He appeared as a friend. Sure enough, it led to infidelity. Alignment can't be ignored. We talked about certain topics while I was having kids. She didn't want to have kids. Um, and that was one of the red flags. And I know you desire marriage. So I think it's best you move on with your life. What you do, hold on, Lisa, what you do? I told him, okay. <laughs> she didn't ask me why. <laughs> I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. I've, I watched their videos of them having sex, so I would try to imitate that. No discussion is off limits. Dear Future Wifey Podcast brings healing. You inspire us to try God a little bit more. Up and through this platform, I have realized that it's possible. It's possible to love again. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. Season 7 is all about tough topics. I'm Lateris R. Winfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Well, Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so we can be notified about upcoming episodes. Listen, we are in season seven, Tough Topics. Y'all been rocking with us. We've been talking about a whole lot of stuff. I want to create this safe space so that we can have conversations that you are really running into in these dating streets. And so uh, that's what the Dear Future Wifey podcast is all about, creating a safe space so that we can all learn together. Well, today we're going to have fun. We got some cool individuals on the podcast today. Very familiar face. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Latoya Luckett What's and Tori up? Dixon. What's, What's going on? You? So listen, mm. Toya, yeah. you said that you want to do the podcast and bring your therapist on the podcast. I did. Why? Well, let's have some education in the room. Uh -huh. I'm not saying you're not educated. I mean, I, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not, learning. I'm a student. I just felt like we need a licensed therapist <laughs> to, to deal actually, with your problems. No, wait a minute. I mean, because that's what basically you're saying. I didn't. You said no. that you need. You said that I can't help you unpack your problems. I didn't. You need, say, I didn't say anything about unpacking. Well, you said that you I need some education in the room. You said, said you that we. I felt a licensed therapist would be would needed be helpful, during your interview helpful, for your interview. Helpful was the word that I used for your interview, and I enjoy her company. <laughs> and I just felt like <laughs> Child we all we got up in here We are Me and you all. Toya Exactly <laughs> Through the fire Through the fire And she was with me And uh -huh. has been with me Through the fire So I just felt like um, If we needed some Back door on some answers uh -huh. From a therapist point of view uh -huh. Boom we don't even years? have to phone a friend She right here I'm Don't here. have to phone a friend I'm We don't have to phone a friend How many years have y'all been rocking together Oh man Wow um, Probably um, since what 20? Since we met in yoga in yes, yoga? That's, that's how right. y'all met? We met in yoga. We met in yoga. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. A friend of ours had a birthday party. A mutual yep. friend had a birthday party and she wanted it to be like a wellness centered birthday party. Yep. So we met at a yoga class and we were doing yoga. We were. And then mm -hmm. how did the conversation? I'm a therapist. And I obviously looked like I was in shambles. And <laughs> she was like, take my card. <laughs> you look like you're going through it. And I was like, really? And I, she, I was, you know, new to Dallas and, um, you know, for real she yeah. just came up and she was she introduced herself she was a sweetheart such a light in the room and um she was like look if you ever need a therapist or someone to talk to share with or whatever i'm a safe space and i was like yes and she has been just that which is interesting because i mean it has to be 
somebody has to be very trustworthy for you mm-hmm. to be able to trust them with your, yes. your your innermost thoughts and secrets, especially you being somebody that, uh, you you know, you hate the term celebrity. I hate it. But uh, what word you want to use? Passion. Somebody that's recognized by, yeah, yeah. by millions. Everybody, you know, you want to go, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Yeah. And I just feel like. And they're always glad you came. Always. Yeah. And um, a few <laughs> folks know my name. <laughs> <laughs> Troubles aren't all the same. They're not. They're different. They're all different. Out Troubles are all yes. different. Oh yes. man, golly, it's wild out here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I a few folk know me. And so you, what made you connect with her and find? Because like I said, mm-hmm. to share your thoughts, to share your heart, to share the stuff that you're going through, you have to have the wherewithal to say, "I'm gonna trust this person." Yeah. Uh, what made you trust her? I mean, I feel like because of the person that invited us, um, okay. who is a dear friend of mine, I felt like everybody in the room, she keeps good company. Okay. So I said, okay, if she's here and if this is someone, because um, I'm sure they talked about it before she actually approached me, mm-hmm. I felt like, okay, this is someone that I know I can trust, I'll be able to share with. Um and of course, the first couple of sessions, I was probably sitting there like everything was great. Yeah. Um, but once we started really diving deep, I was like, OK, yeah, I can talk to her about literally anything. And she there's no judgment. Um, and she's one of those therapists. You know, have you been to the therapist that I don't know if you even yeah, gone yeah, to a therapist because yeah, I, like, I just feel like have you unpacked? Don't, don't, you don't, don't, are you unpacking? Don't I look here? Are you weird? Don't I look here? You showed up. You're right. Did you go see the lady? Did you go see the lady? She always, she always this said she's telling the lady. She called the therapist the lady. I said I was bringing my lady. <laughs> my lady. <laughs> but like, you know how you go to those some of those therapist visits and they just let you talk and then you look up and you've answered your own question? Yep. She is a, she's a combination of that and if I start just going down the rabbit hole, it's like, okay, so I'm going to stop you right there because yeah. blah, 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 blah. And she'll go sister girl on me. Good. I needed both. Of, I needed Good. that. I needed to be able to, you know, be able to come up with my own solution and her allow me Um, the opportunity to do that by getting it out but also if there's something if I need to pivot help me pivot yeah Um, and so she she has just been amazing yeah Hmm. and I always tell her I was like you know um, we are our own personal experts right you are an expert in your own life because you actually live it my job is to stand outside of the space and point a flashlight and say hey you you've been going this way why don't you look that way? Because oftentimes it's just the fact that we haven't seen that there is another opportunity or another decision. Sometimes life has a way of backing us against the wall and putting our backs into the corner. Yes. And so all you need is somebody that's stepping outside of you and saying, okay, this is the way where you were here. Let me flash this light over here and tell me what you think about this. Good. And then we can travel along that way. And that's kind of how Toya and I work together. It's like, okay, so she's here. Let's flash this light over here and see what you got. I love how you say work together because both parties have to be present in the process Mm -hmm. because y'all are both working in tandem and you hit the nail on the head where you say, hey, you because oftentimes we get used well, stuck in doing something the same way over and over again. And someone says, you recognize, like you said, you keep hearing yourself say it. And by the end, you're going, Hold on. If I keep coming here and I keep saying the same problem, then I'm the common denominator in all these situations. And my responses are the common denominator in all these situations. So let me go ahead and fix me. And it's scriptural. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. And so in the in the in the confession process of it, you find yourself being healed because God placed us in the in the in the heart posture that the more we start articulating that thing, the more our minds start saying, let's unpack this, let's unravel this and then let's find a solution to that thing yes uh toya yes um it was a video i saw the other day mm-hmm. it was a video i saw the other day where a lot of people were giving you a lot of uh oh, we gonna flat. start off like we this? just gonna we just might as well we just wow. gonna jump in on this because this 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 bothered me it wasn't oh, even about you at this point it bothered oh, Lord, me oh, Lord, oh, in this oh man it was a video where they was talking about um you had it was an interview that they i went on youtube and went to go find how long ago was this interview mm-hmm. and it was months ago where you did this interview where you said that you believe the hierarchy of relationships should literally be you well like the spouses and then the children mm-hmm. Why in the world? No, I am going to ask you why. Because I, I said, I'm going to talk about it. Because this, this is me right here. Oh, my God. There goodness. was nothing wrong with what you said. Matter of fact, that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be spouse, then children. First of all, it's supposed to be God, God. God spouse, first. 
children, and then everybody else. I'd because, even give you another one, Latarius. What's it's that? God, you, spouse, Ooh. children. Mm. Right? Because you can't skip your responsibility to be a healed enough Slide person. the microphone close to your mouth. I need um, it all the way close because that was good. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. You can't you skip yeah. the uh-huh. process right. Right. of having your own healed space before you are entering into relationship. And so as you are drinking from the cup of whatever God is pouring out into you, Teach. you have to have the oil first. And what happens is, is your spouse and your children, they actually get anointed from the overflow. So when God spoke about the oil and the anointing on Aaron, he says, I'm going to pour it on his head and it's going to fall down oh, to his, his beard, beard. and down on. to his skirts. So when we look at how the anointing flows, we can't leave ourselves on the outside of it and then think that some way, somehow we can find our ways back in. No, to keep the alignment, I'm going to ask you to put yourself first so that you can prioritize your relationship with God. And then from there, you show up as the best version of yourself to then be a partner and be a parent. So you I, at this point, I can just step outside. Yeah, you, you, I can you, wait you, out front. Oh, you <laughs> there's there's this word in them. I saw a snack yes, basket it's, it's, outside. It's, 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 it's I'm going to let you guys uh, finish this. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you didn't tell me she had all this word in them. I told you just why she coming. I, look, I do, first of all, let me just put this out here. Your boy tried me. He was like, if you can't be brave enough to show up by yourself, that's you know what, what I'm saying? That's I said, I said, no, that's not it. The reason I'm coming with my therapist is one, I need people to understand that people that you guys might mm, not say look up to, but might admire their gifts. Right. We need help too. Facts. Probably most of the time we need help the most. Mm. So I want you to know that if you are in a space where you think you might need help or you don't feel um, like you're at your best or right. you need some healing, don't be afraid to call the lady. Don't yeah. I called the lady. The you know lady. what I'm saying? I talk to the lady often. Yes. And so <laughs> the lady got a name. Her name is Tori Dixon. Tell, tell, but, don't, don't tell, tell, give context why you keep saying the here. lady. What, what you say to guys? Because you know say? the guys be like, you know, when you break up with them, I'm going to go see the lady. I promise. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to get my life right. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to call the lady. I promise. And they be calling too. And they be calling they the lady. Calling. So this is the lady. Dude, so I call bought me the lady for like, y'all. Listen, I got to come see you because then I can't go home yeah. until I prove that I was at an appointment. I was like, sir, let me get you in. I don't even have no more time, but I'm gonna get you because you got to go back home, sir. We ain't trying to keep families together. You need to go home, so I need you to come and see. You me. having people having mercy calls absolutely. with you? Absolutely, they need absolutely, that they absolutely. Saw the lady. And she's like, listen, if I don't see a counselor swiped on this card, you can't come home because you need fixing. You Fix need fixing. It. You, you need, need fixing. fixing. Yes. So when you fixed. think about that, about how people came at Toya about that comment, what is your take on that? Why? Why is it? Because I have an answer for it, and I want to hear what you got to say. Why were predominantly women triggered by her saying that the spouse comes before the kids? Because I think historically, um, there has been this disconnect and divide between what happens in the relationships with men and with women. And when you have discounted the need for having a man in your life, then you also discount your responsibility to place him in a spot that will be above your children. There it is. Usually we will place most of our, when we've had those types of experiences, we will place all of our eggs in our basket with our children because who's going to take care of us when we're old. And so it's my responsibility to make this hierarchy you know, clear up front so that if this person leaves, then I will always have my children. And oftentimes we start to adultify children in those spaces. Mm. So then our male sons become men of the house and they're three and our daughters become the, um, the pinnacle or they become the canvas onto which we paint our own manhood. So we say things like I'm a good man because of the way I treat my daughter. So now she becomes, she is put in this place where she shouldn't be when we should really be practicing manhood and womanhood with men and with women and not adultifying our children to take those spaces so it's completely understandable Mm -hmm. why um, a person would say that um, because of the hurt and the pain but if you want to stay in order you have to start in order so Mm. it is your spouse and then it's your children stay in order is there a chalkboard (laughs) (laughs) stay in order start in order and also can I just speak from even if we take the word out of it right if you if we look at things from um just the foundation right when we come together and we you know there's partnership you know if that's not strong right if we don't honor each other if we don't support each other first because obviously the mom and dad were there before the children 
right? We created these children, but if if our foundation isn't strong, then it's going to affect the children. Right. So if we we have to honor and notice I'm saying honor each other. Yes. See, I spoke from the wife side, right. the female side, right? I was speaking from my point of view of I want to honor my husband, my partner, so that, you know, I can raise children in a healthy household so they'll know what love looks like. They'll see the husband and wife honoring each other. They'll see the love, the exchange, all of those different things. So we'll be great examples for them. It's not just, and we as women sometimes feel we got to carry the load. I'm not just honoring a person, first of all, that doesn't deserve that right. Yeah. Okay. Now, there are also people out here that have been abused. Right. So I'm not speaking about staying in an abusive relationship or having a child tell you, you know, this is what's going on with me. And then you don't believe your child and you believe your husband. That's not what I'm talking about. This is not that at all. Yeah. But so I know there's a lot of people that are scarred and I know that yeah. it could be triggering. And that's why I think that, that, that the comments you got. was. Yeah. That and I, I'm not speaking. We're not talking about abuse at all. I am talking about you have to honor each other as husband and wife first. Make sure that foundation is solid right. and the kids will benefit from it. Facts. Like that's that's how it should go. That's and a lot especially in our community. Yeah. We don't see a lot of that because there's a lot of breakup or daddy wasn't there or yeah. you know, all of those disappointments. And my I come from a divorced family. My parents divorced when I was ten years old. So, you know, I didn't have my father in the household after after ten. Um and I also feel the effects of that. And I also had a single mom who had to carry the yeah. load of having two, you know, two children, keeping us in private school, supporting our gifts, keeping the home together by herself. And she, and if you ask her today, and she was so glad that I actually answered that way and started this conversation because she was a mother that decided to sacrifice what she wanted as a mom, her needs, and put all of her energy, everything she had into raising her children. And now, my mom, I mean to tell you business, you know, <clears throat> 25, 30 some years later, I'm not going to let y'all do the math. Yeah. Um, you know, she really hadn't dated since. Yeah, she told me. When, when, she when, hasn't dated since. She yeah. hasn't found love for herself because she now feels, well, I gave all my time and my energy to, to my, my kids. kids. Now they're gone on. They have their own families. My daughter got her own kids. Yeah. You know, all these different things. And I'm, you know, here I am. And that's so, why I say that when you put context around it and people respond out of their trauma. Yeah. And so they respond and they like, because I know they've been in situations where the mom uh, or yeah, their their mom put their man ahead of or their boyfriend or their boyfriend, boyfriend. Now, or their so, boyfriend. So that's the difference. So oh, difference. when they heard, uh, I don't know what you said specifically. Did I you said say husband? Husband. They heard man Boy, yeah, boyfriend. Yeah. Any man mm-hmm. putting them ahead, and I was like, no, listen specifically. Talking about a husband, that is the hierarchy of any relationship. And when you look at it, if we did stuff in decent in order, then you're getting married first, and then you're having the kids. So then, how do I put what I have? from that union ahead of the union it doesn't make sense mm-hmm. and so we we and that's the reason why I love having these conversations because I want to help uh unlearn some bad habits because yeah. we've been we're operating in trauma mm-hmm. and then and then you hear all this rhetoric on social media and then we read it and go oh well that's how it's supposed to be and I'm like no you over here consuming toxicity that's mm-hmm. not how it's supposed to be and then you try to have a healthy relationship with a mate with that ideology and they looking like well clearly uh your son your husband so hey you ain't got no time for me and you can't mm-hmm. have a healthy relationship clearly your daughter got to be your wife because you don't want me to be your wife so y'all y'all keep doing what y'all doing and it puts you in an awkward situation because you're not you don't have the space to articulate how you feel in that relationship because it looks like you're jealous yeah. of that child you know what I'm saying it, oh yeah. did that say something no you okay. can't nope. then, then touch mm. on nothing toy Mm-mm. okay we're gonna, we're gonna unpack that just, well right. I just want to remind everybody I have a carry on yeah that in even <laughs> <laughs> I didn't check any baggage <laughs> for this flight I am uh, <laughs> You you carry on. I yeah. have, yeah, carry a matter of fact, I have a crossbody. Okay, and that's it. That's Wallet on the chain. 
<laughs> super light. And can I be very honest with yeah, you? You said that people are operating out of their trauma, but I want to give us even a different perspective and say they're actually operating outside of their truth, right? Because you're outside you're per- of their truth, right? Your perception is actually your reality. So what you have perceived and what you have experienced is actually your truth. And I'm sorry that you perhaps grew up in a home where. Um, there was a boyfriend or even a woman figure in the home and your your parent wasn't able to see your needs outside of the needs of that person. Mm. Because it's very true that we do see that a lot where, right. you know, the person comes in and now all of a sudden this is stepdaddy or whomever a stepmother. And now they're starting to make rules and regulations for a home for which they did not um, pay for or even put anything into. So right. now you're coming into a home and you're attempting to disrupt a structure that's already been in place mm. instead of coming in and saying, let me learn this family. Let me see how they work. Let me see how they operate. And sure, they may not operate in the way that you would think would be the right way. But if you are a bonus parent and you're coming into a space, your first obligation at that point is just to observe, to just see what that family structure is like. So then that way you're not stepping on any toes and you're not being disrespectful to a home structure that has already been um, sustained before you even got into that place. And then And what will happen is that the people in the home, the children in particular, will have a different level of respect for you Mm -hmm. and they will honor you because you came in the home to help and not to wreak havoc. Because when you come in and you start talking about some these kids don't wash no dishes, they don't do nothing, they don't clean up. And you're like, but wait a minute, this is the structure that you came into. So your responsibility, you may not like it. It may not be the right thing, but your responsibility is to honor what's already there gain the respect and the trust of the people that are already in the home Mm -hmm. because you cannot discipline children who do not trust you. Right. You cannot put rules in place with children who do not honor you. So earn your honor with the children, with your partner, and then you will have a voice in how things will look going ahead. Earn your honor. Earn Earn your your honor. honor. Hmm. Earn your honor just because you're an adult and you Earned. grown and you pay the bills and you pay the light bill and you make sure some cereal in the in the cabinet <laughs> and some milk. All the cereal. Earn your honor. And that means you have to honor the individuals that are already in the home. Be respectful of their space. Be respectful of their thoughts. Amen. Be respectful of how they are moving in that home. And what happens is the children will see you humbly coming in Mm -hmm. and then they will start to ask you questions. Mm. They will start to allow you. They'll be like, so what do you think about that? Or I asked my mom or my dad about this. What are your thoughts? Right. Mm -hmm. But if you do not earn your honor, you will not have respect in that home. Well, man, when I tell you that was good, mm. good Lord Jesus, you should get a chalkboard in here. You, you I'm just saying, a, you should be a therapist. You know you what I thought about, thought about it? About I thought you about thought it. About it. I, I thought about it. I did. I thought about it. This is your word mm-hmm. today. Yeah, your yeah. word today is mm-hmm. becoming. Yeah. I felt that. Yeah, it was good. Right in my shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it came right there. Right there. Hey, hey, God. Uh-huh. Let me tell you something that sold me uh, on you before I even met you. Uh, Toya said something that was very impactful. She said, "You." You know, after you go through um, a couple of failed marriages, then you can get very jaded towards marriage and feel like it doesn't work. I don't want to ever get married again. Forget yeah. it. I'm just giving me a little life partner and I'm just going to kick it for the rest of my life. Kick it. Uh, but she said you would never let her go into that space yeah. that you kept like throwing a life preserver. I'm going to call it a love preserver. <laughs> and kept throwing it out there and said, mm-hmm. no, nah, baby, I'm going to let you go there. I don't let- Why? Why was that important? One, because I knew she was a wife. Ooh. Oh, and Lord Jesus. Because I knew she was a wife. <laughs> I am not going to cry. Oh, God, I, dog. I, God, God doesn't give us gifts that he mm. doesn't intend for us to use. And being a wife is actually a gift of God, is a gift that we are, we've been given. Not everyone has been given that gift. And it's not because, not to some detriment to you if you haven't been. But I always knew that she was a wife. And what I knew was that I wasn't going to let the gift of her wifehood be diminished because of a wound. And wounds are not there to diminish gifts. Wounds are there. They happen. Um, We go through so many difficult challenges in life. But I knew that I needed to remind her that her wound would actually make her a warrior as she continued in wifehood. You'd be killing me with this alliteration. I've been following it this whole time you talk. (laughs) 
You always hitting this alliteration. It feels like I'm in church. You're speaking to my soul. Yeah, I knew mm-hmm. that. I knew that she was a wife and I knew that she had the gifting. And I knew that um, oftentimes what the enemy does is he tries to throw these um, these tactics. Mm-hmm. These, yes. You know, he's a tactical person. Um, he has, um, he always has a scheme. He's a schemer. He's a scammer. And so what he wants you to do is he wants you, he wants to discourage you to the point that you feel like you have to put your gift down and lay it to the side. Teach. Because because you had a wound and I knew that I was not going to leave her wounded on this battlefield um, and that we were going to come out of this together and no matter what happened if she chose to use that gift in wifehood then she would and if she didn't that would be okay but what you were not going to do is you were not going to wither under the wound on this battlefield you were going to come out and we were going to come out together and however God chose to use this gift in your life Mm -hmm. we were going to have it used but we were not going to stay withered under a wound I wasn't going to let it happen. Mm-mm, she didn't. You was not going to stay with it under the wound. Nope. You was going to come out as a warrior. Amen. She was going to come out as a warrior. Tori, how does it feel hearing that? Do you feel like you're a wife? <laughs> I know you're getting choked up. My entire esophagus. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you want to just break down. I did. And I'm trying to because the lash is yeah. a lot. Um <laughs> <laughs> and you ain't got no makeup scene here. I know, but I got some tissue. I cannot work up under these conditions. I got tissue. Yeah, grab that. Uh, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, so she said, you are a wife. Mm-hmm. Have and you I always am. thought like that? Yes. You've always, you're talking about from the beginning, as a teenage, you've always imagined yourself being married. Yes. Yes. I and am so the. so you hear her. Hey, yes. I'm the one that. that has the screenshots all up and through her phone on the white dresses. And really? The, yes. I'm. I'm that girl. I am that girl. I'm a girl's girl. Or I just, I just love that God created marriage. Yeah, I love it, and and it's been, it's crazy. I'm the girl that loves that and has seen divorce all of my life. I'm literally surrounded by divorce, and but I'm always the one that's trying to be hopeful or just stay positive about things. And the thing that I felt like was untouchable, I feel like that's what I desire the most. I know that I can have a healthy family structure. I know that I'm a wife. I know that I deserve an amazing husband. And I know that God has not turned his back on me. So So you've 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 experienced uh a broken family at the age of ten. Uh, yes. And you and you've experienced two Failed marriages. I hate to use the word failed either. I don't because I always believe you learn something it didn't from work these things. Out. So it just didn't work out. And it's not necessary because I a lot of times and I heard the amazing Sarah Jakes Roberts mm-hmm. say, sometimes your lessons will look like losses. And that is one of the truest statements. Sometimes your lessons, your hardest lessons will look like your biggest losses. And I will say that, yes, um, my marriages were some of my biggest lessons. I would not have found or, you know, I wouldn't have the relationship that I do with her had I not gone through what I went through in my marriages. So I am grateful. Yeah. And I'm understanding um, more than ever that God is intentional. And I know that I had to go through some things in order to um, get the lessons that I need to make me a better person, a better wife, a better mom, um, a better friend, daughter, all of those different things. But yeah, I mean, I got two amazing children yeah. out of my last marriage. There's nothing failed about that. Teach. The book of Fantasia says sometimes you got to lose to win again. She got the Holy Ghost. I literally was going through my books to buy my, <laughs> all of my biblical books. The book, said, the book of Fantasia. Is that after Mark? Yeah, second chapter. Okay. It says sometimes you got to lose to win again. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm reminded of that, that, that word uh, because, like you said, sometimes our, our losses— you know, um, when you when you focus on the losses, it, it, it's all about perspective too. Like when you when you look at your whole life and you say, "All right, I've been here, I've done that." But what's so powerful is that she said, "I'm not going to let you give up on who you are, the essence of who you are. Mm-hmm. You are a wife." And so, and and I'm telling you, it's so encouraging to a lot of people because you you have no idea how many people DM me and say. 
I just figure I'm just never going to get married again. Mm -hmm. I don't believe God. I was talking to a friend the other day and she said, I've been married before. Maybe it's just not God's will for me to be married again. I hear that a lot too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she said, I already yeah. had it one trial. I was like, what kind of God you serve? <laughs> if, you, if you worked at a job and got fired, you say, ain't my God will for me to never get another job? Like, do you ever say right. that? <laughs> you know, if you eat some food and you got food poison, ain't my I'm will. Never ain't never eating again. I guess ain't God's will for me to get. Like, well, why do we treat food ain't like that? Food ain't yeah, for me no, no more. I just, I'm just giving up on it you know what I'm saying at the end of the day that ain't <laughs> at my the end of the day sense. we give up on stuff mm -hmm. so quickly and something and I understand why is because the devil hates covenant the mm -hmm. devil hates uh, unity he hates that why because he knows that one can chase away a thousand and two can set ten thousand demons to flight he knows that so he knows that if you get two people joined together in covenant you can wreak havoc on the gates of hell. Yeah. And he don't absolutely. want that to happen. Yeah. And so I'm glad that you always keep a heart posture of hopefulness where you say, uh, I'm using that alliteration. I got that from you. Heart posture of hope, hopefulness. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that you always stay in that, that heart posture because knowing who you are keeps you striving for that which you want and what you desire and that and God's greatest for you. Yeah. And so that's that's a word of encouragement. What would you say? to women right now that may be watching this some of maybe even your friends who have given up and just said I don't, I don't think God wants me they know that they're a wife but they don't believe that their husband prospect is out there what would you say Toya? you don't <laughs> don't give up for what I mean just because you haven't had the best luck just because we hear all the time uh, it's, it's, it's tinkle in the dating pool yeah, uh -huh. yeah, It's wild out here The streets yeah. is crazy I, I, I get it It's scary I, I get it Social media Instagram yeah. The DMs are nuts You know I get it I understand that But like you said I mean what a mighty God we serve Yeah like I, I pray, I continue to pray um, for the things for that I want, my desires. And I feel it deeply yeah. that those prayers will be answered. But also we've got to do the healing. We've got to make sure that we're right. And we also got to can't rush things. Yes. You know, if, if, if we're still going through the healing process and a lot of times you can tell if you still talking negative about your last experience, if you still cringe every time your ex name come up, <laughs> if you know you see red every time, you know, <laughs> then baby, just you need a, you got a little more time. You got some more bacon to do. God ain't finished. You, we 365, 375. We, you know, you still got some bacon, some healing to do until. God sends you the son that he has for you, the son that he's been preparing. And maybe he's still preparing him. You know what I mean? That part. He, maybe you got to have part. patience. Absolutely. You have to have patience, but you also have to believe for God's best for your life. Yeah. And also we have, I hate to say it. There are some mothers who are telling daughters, I made it without a husband. You can too. I still, you know, we got, we also got to stop that. Yes. Just be, her fight ain't your fight. Teach. Mama, auntie, grandma. Teach. Her walk ain't your walk. Yeah. So we got to stop also spreading negativity in the yes. household, you know? Yes. Um, but believe for the best. Believe for the best. Believe that there is someone out there that will see you, that will love you, appreciate you. If you're a single mom, love your kids, cherish your kids, be kind to you. Believe the best for yourself. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Stop allowing yourself to be torn down by negative thoughts because it also starts right here. If you keep telling yourself, I don't deserve this because yeah. I didn't see this or I don't deserve this because I don't feel it's out there or it hasn't presented itself yet, then you're already discouraging yourself before Facts. any man or any woman can, you yeah. know, come into your life or even try. Yeah. Absolutely. And also guys, um, I know we have our list. I was one that had the list. I had, I made the list and put it in the Bible. Because I thought that was going to do some extra. Okay. I said, if I make my list and I put it in the word and I shut it real tight and I put it in my, my nice stand, then God's going to hear it and he's going to see exactly what I want. He has to be six, five, six, like no shorter than a certain build, certain kind of income. Rip the list up. Y'all, I know we're making our vision boards, but sometimes what you think you want Teach. ain't what you need. Teach. 
It's not what you need. It might be outside of your norm. Yes. You know what I mean? It might not even, you know, be as appealing when you first see it. But yeah. then they come in with the kindness yeah. and give you exactly what your heart desires and needs and been longing for. That part. What you didn't get to see in your household. That part. You know what I mean? That's it. Man, I will run around this little Hold white on, Tori, y'all want you to unpack that because a lot of times people run. say, so I, I was talking to, I was talking to a friend the other day. She said, so you, you trying to say I can't have what I want? I said, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, ha, uh, do you have any flexibility? Come I said, on. I used to be so rigid. I used to be like, the woman that I am going to marry has to live in driving distance, forty-five minutes away from my domicile. You put forty-five minutes. It got, it got to be close. In I got Dallas? to be able inside just, the loop. Yeah, inside the Baby. loop. It can't be all far out. I don't want to get on the plane to go see you. I had all these crazy rules in my life, mm -mm. and then God said, "Did you ever check me for all that?" Like, period. So, so I can't bring you somebody in a different zip code, state, country. I'm just, I'm limited. I'm God, and but you're going to limit that, me. All of that has you looking from a deprivation mentality. And if you are looking for anything from an ideology of deprivation, you will never find what you need. Mm -hmm. So for everybody that's out there and you are dating and you are looking to have someone and you're thinking there's pee in the pool, maybe you need to take that mentality and throw it away somewhere because there's nothing in the pool but water in you. And if you in the pool, that means you you got pee on you too <laughs> so what you need to do real what you need to do is you yes. need to allow God to be God in your life I remember Latarius when I moved here to Dallas and I actually opened up my private practice I was like God I don't know nobody in Dallas like I know a couple people Teach. but I don't know anybody and the Lord said to me he says you know me and I know everybody that's what he, oh, man, that's man. What he and so let me tell you run. that well, if you are out here with this deprivation mentality you mm. got to know the God that you know who knows everybody he know owns a that a cattle on a thousand hill But he made everybody He knows exactly How many hairs are on your head He knows exactly yeah. What you need Who you need And he knows Where they are So if your pool mm. Is too small mm. My suggestion to you Is that you jump Into a river Into a lake Where God can do Whatever he wants to mm -hmm. do In your situation and feed He is a God Who will part a sea For a thousand Art A million mm. people So that a million people Can cross over a sea And their enemy Can't get behind them And are you trying to tell me That you're <laughs> pool is so shallow that you can't allow God to part this this shallow pool for you so he can bring you somebody baby I don't know what kind of God you serving mm. but I know the one that I'm serving he's able a and he's well willing man. and he wants to do all good things for his children he said listen if your earthly father loves you mm. and he and wants to, to do good, good things to you yeah. what more does your heavenly father have for you do you think one little person he can't match you with one person what kind of power do you think he has or doesn't have what kind of God are you really serving stop playing in his face playing if yourself. you want him to do this for you you better say God I want you to take the wheel you can bring me who you have for me because you know me ever since I was created in the womb of my mother so that means you know the man too that means you have purpose designed for us and if if a whole Israel army I'm sorry if a whole Egyptian army cannot stop some people I'm sure P will be just fine I like I like her did she say I'm quite sure P will be just fine? I'm sure it will Tinkle. be fine. You're in. I'm I'm sure. Wow. Across dry land, mm -hmm. no mud on their feet. Mm -hmm. He can do it. He can. Do I believe you it. believe that he can do it? He did it. He's, He's sick already of you done. Him in a box. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. He's sick of you putting him in your little pool. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's in the too small pool. The kitty pool. You kitty in the pool, kitty pool. pool. Yeah. Full of blow up. Water on your ankles. The ball pool. With and your little you floaties on. Can God do it? Can God do <laughs> it? Little floaties on. Little floaties on. What can he not do? <laughs> it's almost like I started looking at it for the shoppers in the house. You know when you're going to buy like a specific coat or a skirt or something like that. And they have the little filter up there, right? Right? And you're like, okay, I'm looking for a red skirt. So they ask you, do you want it short, long? Do you want it red? Da, 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 da. By the time it goes from like 700 skirts like to about 30 skirts. <laughs> You know, that's what I started looking at. And I'm yeah. like, why do I keep doing this to God? Why yeah. do I keep doing this to myself? Stop mm. filtering like, really? God's options. Stop, Stop filtering, filtering God's, God's options. options, bruh. Stop it. Stop God, it. Y'all got dog. to cut it out. Ladies, get out of your, 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 you know how we do our sister chats, yeah. our texts, just bashing men. Fellas, think, we just got to be, we got to do better. Okay. We just, y'all just got to do better. Yeah, said, okay. Fellas, just, fellas, fellas, just, fellas, just, just come better. on. We just do better. We just, just come do. on. Talk to the lady. Talk to God. Talk to, Talk to yourself if you have to. Okay. But, <laughs> but do better. But do, 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 do better. I'm just asking you to do better. And ladies, we got to do better too. We can't 
stop. The negativity has to stop. Yeah. It has to stop, bro. We have to believe for better. We have to hope. What happened to hope, man? Yeah, happened that part. Me. What happened to hope? That yeah. part. What is there a posture of hope? I know we talk you talk about posture a lot, and my Absolutely. posture bad, especially on this couch. Absolutely. But <laughs> it, we got, is there a posture of hope? There is. Hope is the optimistic expectation that something good will happen for me. Uh-huh. And so mm. oftentimes we think that something good can happen for everybody else, mm-hmm. but we forget that something good can actually happen happen for us yeah. and it's because we've gone through so many hurts yeah. so much pain so much disappointment and so we're like man why me like why would something good happen for me why would it not yeah why would it not something good is going to happen for you and you have to be optimistically expecting mm-hmm. so if you wake up every day with no expectation you are absolutely going to get what you do not expect mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you will get it so if you're expecting nothing, you will get nothing. None. Nada. And you can say, well, Tori, I have faith. It's great. But faith needs a job. Faith needs a Without job. If works. you have no yeah. hope, then faith has absolutely nothing to work with. Faith so don't work you, with the unemployed. It does not work. Do. It'll be Can unemployed. It'll be yeah. sitting yeah. on the sidelines. But if your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness, you dare not trust the sweetest frame, mm-hmm. but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Your faith now has something to work with. Yeah. Give your faith something to work with, and it's your hope. You just need a little bit. You don't need a lot. I know that things are challenging. Yes. I know that things are difficult. I'm sorry that that thing happened to you. I believe you. It happened. It was wrong. Someone should apologize for it. And I am here to do that for you. I am so sorry that that thing happened. But don't lose your hope. You got to stay hopeful. Chalkboard. Here. I think. <laughs> right there. Right, right on there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, yeah. We, I mean, I, or we can put it here. I understand. I understand why you now, keep going. Now, do you believe? Yeah. Do you trust me? I now? have hope. Are we in the trust tree? Yeah, we're in the trust tree. Okay, because yeah. yeah. I mean, this yeah. was for your good. I know it's for me. It was. It's for our good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this was yeah. definitely for your good. Yeah. For Maybe me. you needed to see the lady. Maybe yes. God <laughs> was speaking through me. Look at God. Bring Tori. Yeah. Yeah. Bring, bring the lady. Bring the lady <laughs> to the terrorist <laughs> needs. The, the lady. lady. Yeah. Um. <laughs> When I say you 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 speaking, when I'm telling you it's so edifying, I love. We should call this episode the lady. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. The lady. Conversations the lady. with the lady. The, the lady. lady. Yes, I'll take yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 yeah. The lady. Go yes. talk to the lady. Go talk we to talk to the lady. <laughs> we talk to the lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Hilarious. I, I like to ask people this, Toya. Mm-hmm. What did you learn the most about yourself? coming out your past marriage? Ooh, I am resilient. Mm. I am resilient. I can sometimes have empathy to a fault. Yeah. I, um, I am strong. I am strong, but at the same time, I have to trust my my strength is also in trusting my instincts and trusting myself, trusting in God. But when he is speaking to me, actually to listen, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and I, I learned that in this journey. Um, and like I said, we serve an intentional God. So it made my faith stronger because in these last few years, I'm not just going to say marriage in these last few years, I've had to lean and trust God more than I have ever before in my life. And um, I just, I just learned that I am capable. I have room. I have room to do for myself, do for my children, but I also have room to love again. I have enough love for that. God has given me enough love to go around. Um, but also at the same time, I just have to be, we got to watch. I'm trying to say all the right things without <laughs> saying. I am. We just got to, when you're dating, you just got to really make sure that y'all connect. Right. And not just on small things. Y'all have to have real communication. Right. Talk about the future. Talk about your beliefs. Talk about how you want to raise children. Right. For real. It just can't be about, you know, 
the sexual connection yep. or, you know what? My parents got divorced too when I was yep. six. You know what I mean? Yeah. It can't be that kind of stuff. Go through, somebody say, go through all the seasons yeah. together. Yeah. You've got to really see that person. Give it time. Um, and I sometimes think we're in a rush to get to that thing and get down the altar that we don't pay, pay close enough attention um, to who we're marrying. Mm-hmm. And that's on both sides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's on both sides. So I'm not going to. And I think the reason being is because the older we become, the more we just ain't got time to be wasting with folks. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you start Mm -hmm. spending all this time. Like in your 20s, you dating people. You you ain't really rushing for nothing. You get 40, you like, I don't want another boyfriend. I'm too old for this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't want another girlfriend. It's like, either you my wife or nah. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. Or nah. Like, what we doing here? Other than that, (laughs) we just going to be be friends. You know what I'm saying? You DM me three times. We married. We together. (laughs) We you go got together? three DMs. <laughs> then we together. So they DM you three times. Oh, man, listen, three, three DMs. You look at me hard. You look at me good and long. We look, go together. Look, we're together. If you blink twice, three, three DMs. If you blink twice, three, three DMs. That's we are all in I this thing. Y'all, y'all getting a marriage license? Oh God! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Write it up. Bring your driver's license, please. The next day. And your birth day. certificate. And your birth. The Social next day. Security card. <laughs> I hear it suddenly in my in my spirit. In your, yeah, I hear it in my right ear. Three DMs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sudden move. <laughs> <laughs> Expeditious move by God. Yeah. Tori, would you? Um, oh my God. Do you believe in premarital counseling? Absolutely. Absolutely. What? I'll talk to Tori. Oh. I'm- <laughs> Toya sounded Tori sounded like Toya just then I just felt the need to respond oh yeah I just felt the need so would you, absolutely is that a is that a prerequisite it has to do with marriage counseling no I, and can we it doesn't even have to be marriage counseling I mean premarital counseling it, what I'm saying here's the other thing we don't even have to call it premarital counseling relationship counseling okay and then I've heard people say if y'all got to go to counseling before you get married, that means y'all might not need to be together. That's no, how about my exactly? My thing is, if we're thinking future, yeah, then I feel like we need to start having conversations. That's the thing. We don't have those in depth conversations before we jump the broom, Fact. go down the aisle. We wait till the problems present themselves yeah. instead of having those real in depth, hard conversations that hey might make yeah. y'all say, "Whoa, let's take a pause, let's take a break." Maybe we need to work through this or say hmm maybe we're not the match we thought we were yeah you and know okay. don't wait and that's which is, totally which, fine which is important because mm-hmm. like last i did an episode in january called healing from heartbreak but i thought this woman was my wife um we went through i said we got to start pre pre-marital counseling i said i want to go through pre pre before i even proposed you i want to go through counseling so i ain't spending my money wasting no money on the ring uh-huh. you know what i'm saying because yeah, you can't yeah, go yeah. get that you can't take it back mm-hmm. so at the end of the day you'd be like uh, can i get this back she said no you know what i'm saying they was like i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you bought it you keep it and so i said i want to go through pre pre-marital counseling yeah. but in the pre pre-marital counseling things began to unravel and her and and her childhood trauma came up and all mm-hmm. that which made her and the counselor said do you just feel like Lateris is too good to be true? She said, I've just never met a guy as pure intention as this before. And mm-hmm. it scared her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this is the best version I've ever been in my life. And mm-hmm. now it's, it's, it's falling it's apart. It's working like against it's, you. Yeah, it worked against me. Wow. I said, my gosh, because I was just straight up honest and transparent. It's like mm-hmm. now the way I lead is straight honesty. I try to tear the relationship apart before it starts. I'd be like, mm-hmm. this is who I am. This is what I've done in my past. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. What, what's up? This is who I've, this is what I've learned from. This is, this, is, uh, this is how I've grown from this situation. Let's have it all out front. But then for when you lead with transparency and honesty like that, sometimes it's scary. So mm-hmm. she was just like, I've never met a guy that just showed his scars at the very beginning mm, yeah. and I was just like this is just who I am I've done mm-hmm. a lot of work and I'm not ashamed of what I've done in the past mm-hmm. what you've fallen in love with right now is because of the pain of my past yeah. but then she was just like I I don't know how to deal with this mm-hmm. and um, it broke my heart when mm-hmm. she walked away from me she was just like December 27th she said I, I just can't the do it <laughs> December 27th wow, he has it was just last year just last year doggone Toya oh, <laughs> it was last year oh, last year oh, December she lived that close yeah Oh, we. That was, that was I'm dumb. glad. See, you guys need to set up a call. Yeah. We'll talk. You should. You should. We'll talk. I am so sorry about that. Yeah. But you look good. Told you. You said I got set up a call. <laughs> set up a call. <laughs> set up a call. But I can see there's been some progress. It's there's been, been, been some. The been, healing been has amazing. started. Yeah, it's been some great. We still got some work to do, but yeah, we're on. He's on, on his way. Road to recovery. Yeah, he's on his. I way. did not know it was that soon. Y'all gonna leave me alone? <laughs> no, I mean, look, he's not crying about. He's not. You're doing really good. You're doing good. You're holding it together. (laughs) Look at you. (laughs) 
Why y'all oh, both man. like this? Why y'all like but, this? But hey, you could have been really heartbroken six years down the line. See, that's what I learned from. So what I don't want a failed, another failed marriage. Mm-hmm. And so I told God, whatever you got to do to shake this thing up, mm-hmm. shake it up. Because mm-hmm. the way I operate is I date private until it's uh, permanent. Right. So it's like, now just think about it. Had that happened after I done did this lavish proposal yeah. and then I done proposed and I give it this ring and then I got to go back on social media and that's when I tell everybody, hey, I'm engaged. And then a month later, talking about, see what happened was. Uh, <laughs> that's why you got to do, do the soft you launch. You got to do the soft launch. You do the soft launch. Don't, before the hard launch, there's a soft <laughs> launch. There's a soft launch. Okay, guys, before we we start throwing things on social media and then you got to go and archive things. Yeah. So archive soft, things. Soft launch. Well, let me break, remind break down you of this. Line. The soft no. launch is 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 more like a, oh, you see a foot. There's a foot in there. That's <laughs> what <laughs> so we call, so, is you know. Is that a pinky? That's not a, what like is this, that? The hands doing like this. You know what I mean? There's a, no, 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 because that's that's hard launch. When With you the start hands, stacking just the, the hands, hands. Oh, just the yeah, foot. The if you start seeing is, knuckles, yeah, that's, that's a hard launch. It's got to be an extra foot or, you know, you have a side of two, there's two plates there. Yeah. There's two drinks. You two know napkins. what I mean? Two napkins. So, so it, ain't, it ain't really yeah. them. It's just the objects. L- yeah, yeah. It's soft. objects. You know what I mean? You know? So it's just the possibility the that there possibility. could be. The possibility. You don't know who that napkin person. belongs to. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the soft launch. And then how do you graduate? The, you know, what's the next level? So you know, then, then, you, then you, you start the seeing hands. knuckles. Knuckles. Then, you you know, somebody, you, you're filming one thing and somebody reaches over to grab <laughs> something. <laughs> like, Whose hand is that? And then you start, then you know, with my folks, they like, I done seen that hand before. <laughs> it's been four videos. I done seen them, that same, same hand. Same the same that hand. hand has been around. <laughs> so at least you know six what months, I mean? that hand been around. That's been around That's six, six months. months. Hand. Yes. If I can count back to February, <laughs> I saw, see, that I've been, you know, I'm good with a soft launch. And then, soft then y'all gonna get the full reel. Boom. <laughs> What music? And so, what's that? Is that is that the proposal? Huh? Is that the proposal? Or do you do a y'all a might not catch mine till y'all see the baby breath in a whole arch with the pastor standing there. We might be you gonna four do years Ray. married. Uh, Issa Rae. Where, where? See how Issa did it? <laughs> Today, somebody's son got it. <laughs> somebody's son made me a wife. You're like, Issa was... But let me tell you what Issa did. She did it so Issa fly. had a whole engagement ring on for about six months. And y'all dared to ask her a question. It was a whole engagement. She wore a ring. Yes, she did. I seen it. Okay. God, and real nice cup. I think it was a with those round diamonds. <laughs> Pave setting. I saw it. And I didn't I you know, I said, I see what you're doing. I see what you but she dared y'all to ask get in her business. Okay. <laughs> she dared y'all to get in her <laughs> business. She dared y'all. <laughs> she dared y'all. Dared. But I'm listen, y'all. Y'all be trying to put folk on y'all Instagram after two weeks <laughs> and then y'all get upset. <laughs> Then somebody, then his girlfriend or his wife get in your DMs or send you that good email and you got to go and take it down. Let's just, everybody put, push on the brakes, just ease take up. Your take your time. We got to do the soft lounge. I'll be, maybe we do a whole interview about, we do a podcast yeah, yeah, on the soft lounge. need to be a whole course on we soft need a course. Lunch. We need a Absolutely. soft lounge course. But then people who are launching and you realize that you've launched into shallow waters <laughs> and this is not the thing for you, <laughs> baby, pull your boat right back mm-hmm. on the shore. You don't owe nobody nothing. No explanation. You, I don't care how many launches you've done. <laughs> if this thing is not what it's supposed to be, pull your boat back and mm-hmm. your net. Empty Reel your net. In. Clean them. Come back to the shore and then launch again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't have to do nothing because you posted something on Instagram. <laughs> don't ruin your life because you like, I don't want to take down that picture. It wasn't a cute picture anyway. You missed up the filter. So just take it down. And they you didn't go with the Paris over. filter. The they, Paris is always good. Oh, my God. I go for Paris. Take it down. Yeah. They done talk about the picture. Oh, you my said God. the picture wasn't cute. Mm-hmm. They thought that picture was the best picture mm-hmm. they took. Take it down. Yeah. But don't you say I do when you know you don't because you can't. I didn't talk to people who Ooh. knew they didn't when they was walking down there. <laughs> I have, they heard the Lord speak. I'm like, I know for a fact for me when I, you know, going through my singles before marriage, thought of marriage, whatever. I remember praying a prayer and I said, I'm Lord, I'm leaving this at your feet. I'm not, I'm not even going to mm-hmm. remove the desire. I just want you to choose because I don't know how to choose, right? And then you want him to, of course, speak to you when you're going through the dating process, you're courting, you're like, Lord, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Yeah. And it's like, some for some folk, he don't say no nah, to you halfway down the aisle. And you're like, wait a minute, I heard that clear as day. 
No, Jesus, is Jesus, that you? is that you? I don't know. I just spent the. Do you see these people? Invitations are out. We have paid for yeah, this no. day. Do you turn around and go you back? Do. You do, you absolutely do. Do you for real, or do you get you it annulled? Baby. Well, you would, you would, you would, you would have to. I, so, in 2020, I sponsored a wedding for. It was supposed to be four couples, but it had been three during the pandemic. Yikes. I got the date because I got the venue because this lady who was um, about to get married the month before canceled it, mm. and my daughter was going to get married. Well, she didn't get married, but she was. She wanted to have. Well, I wanted her to have a big wedding. She didn't. Yeah, I know. I know. Don't 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 throw nothing at me because she. So she was like. <laughs> she was like. Uh, I had made a post and said, hey, my daughter just got engaged and blah, 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 blah. And a friend said, hey, listen, my friend just called off her wedding. She has this beautiful venue that she has put all her money up. You can probably get it for half off or whatnot. Mm. And I said... I ain't going to never walk away from a deal. So I said, all right, well, cool. So then I hit her up. I said, hey, listen, um, I I asked my daughter, hey, you want to look at this venue? Cool. We went and looked at the venue, said, this is beautiful. This is blah, blah, blah. I Mm. said, cool. I got the date from the lady. And then my daughter came back about a couple of days later and was like, "Uh, dad, I just... I don't, I don't know a lot of people like you're going to have nothing but all your friends and my mom's friends all there. Like Mm-mm. this would be for y'all. He mm-hmm. said, if we had a wedding. It's only going to be about 15, 20 people. I said, no, I, no, I'm Mr. Producer. We got to produce the wedding. Got to be nice. Damn. We got to have a choreographed father and daughter dance. We, we, you know, we got to go viral. We got to create all this. Yeah. I was doing the most. Doing That's the who most. I am, Toya. So I said, so, so she said, Dad, I just don't want that. Mm-hmm. And then I said, but you said you did. She said, that's because I let you and, and my mom talk me into it. And I mm-hmm. said, all right, then. Um, all right, well, so what you want to do? She said, I want to do like a a, a courthouse wedding or, or a destination wedding, something, but I just want it small. And then she ended up saying one thing. Maybe we can just, she saw one of her favorite YouTube uh, um people, Kaylin and Kyra, who just pulled over on the side of the road. His Mm -hmm. dad was a pastor and they had this very beautiful wedding on the side of the road. It was so intimate. And she was like, Dad, maybe I can do something like this. And I said, this is crazy. Then she hit me with this. It doesn't See, make sense to spend all this money on a wedding and then we're still living in an apartment. That money could go towards a house. I said, flesh and blood. Come on, priorities what? order. You got priorities. Like, who I taught you that? She was like, it just doesn't make sense. You're going to spend all this money on this. It doesn't make sense. So then it like put her. me in a situation yeah. where I couldn't renege off the, the, the deal I made with the lady. So I had this whole venue. <clears throat> and since I didn't have no wife prospect in, in mind, I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to gift it. And so I mm-hmm. went on social media. I said, who wants to have a group wedding? And then it was like three couples that stepped up and we did this group wedding or whatnot. And it was absolutely beautiful. But again, she, that lady was like, she had a dress. She done spent yeah. all the money on a dress. She did this. And I asked, I said, how did you get the courage yeah. to walk away from so something courageous. a month in advance? Invitations are out. Uh, money on the venue. Money on the dress. You ain't getting that money back from that nope. custom dress. So how do you courageous. do that? She said, I'll save myself more money money, time, heartache, then walking away from it now, then walking away from it later because it's going to fail. Yeah. And I was just like, I salute you. I am so proud. And I invited her to the group wedding that we ended up yeah. having. And I said, I want you to see how we use this date to to provide purpose for other people or whatnot. And she was just like, That's that beautiful. warmed her heart. So, so many times we, we waste time curating moments instead of actually living and making them. And so if you are actually trying to make a thing or make a moment and you're trying curating to moments. curating them, you actually miss out on living them. Mm. And so you miss moments trying to curate them. Yeah. And so that's just a, a wonderful example of your daughter saying, no, I don't want you to make up a moment for me. I actually want us to live in one. And then we can make this what it is for us. And see, and I've I like always her. taught her to have a yeah. voice like that, yeah. even if it hurts my feelings, yeah. even though I didn't get against my daddy daughter dance. And when it actually came down, she got married in the clubhouse of her apartment. See, yeah. And it was just it was it was pretty much free just buying food or whatever. Yeah. And I wouldn't change that day for nothing. You I was taught her like, well. I Beautiful. was like, wow, I said, this is. I said, she looked at me and I looked at her and I was just 
tears start streaming down my face, and I said, here's your day. Beautiful. Married an amazing dude uh, that they met when they were in high school. Well, Beautiful. they actually met when they were in middle school, but I didn't mm. let her date that early. I said, you got to date after you graduate high school. Mm. So, so they went to college together and, and well, all that. Well, it's so beautiful. And I'm going to tell you something about my daughter since we're talking about that. I told my daughter, I said, listen, you spending all this time with this dude, you 19 years old, 18 years old, stop trying to be so serious. Go date other people. Like, mm. date other people so then you can have a choice of who you decide. Because right mm. now, you just, you know, you may be disillusioned. You you dating one guy and be like, this is the one. Just date other folks. She said, Dad, why would I go out searching if I already found the one? Well, mm. I said, that's good. God, dog, it, little girl. Well, <laughs> well, she said, why would I keep going searching? I said, but how do you know you only 18 years old? She said, because I know. Because I know. he's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. I said, yeah. let me talk to old Tay. And we so are. I called Tay. I said, Tay, so my daughter's very serious about you. Are you serious about her? He said, absolutely. I said, so you tell me, why don't you date other people? I started trying to get in his yeah, head. Yeah. He said, well, why would I only want to do that? He said, she's the only woman I want to be with. It. And I said, I love it. I love said, it. God, dog. So then I got them all dressed for prom together and they went off to the prom together. Yeah. But it was just, I learned so much. I'm a student of love. So I just listen to people mm, and extract yeah. gems from people and learn. Yeah. I'm getting so much value from Toya having this conversation, from you, Tori, having this conversation, just learning how we've been out here trying to figure this thing out. Yeah. A lot of us operating in toxicity mm-hmm. or our own truth, yeah. uh, however we want to define it. But we're re- we're we're more responsive, yeah. you know, based upon what was done to us or what we've seen done to other people. Absolutely. And we're not allowing ourselves to live in these moments. Right. And we're trying to curate these moments yeah. by looking at Instagram and saying, I need a man like this. Yeah. I need yeah. a ring like that. Yeah. I want this venue. Yeah. I want this. And we and mm. instead of saying, God, what do you want from me? What do you yeah. want from me? How do you remain in the heart in the heart? posture, uh, Toya, of allowing yourself to be submitted to the will of God? Oh, I always check in. You got to check in with them. You have to have, I'm a relationship person, right? And the most important relationship to me is my relationship with the father. There it is. Right? So how we strengthen that relationship and how you strengthen the knowing of when you hear his voice is you stay in constant communication. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like as long as my pro- posture is right, you know, with him and with that relationship, then I can hear from him. I'll be guided by him. I know when to get out of the way. Yeah. Get in getting out of my own way. Um, and just staying hopeful. Just staying hopeful, believing for the best, even when negativity presents itself, even when I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, even when, you know, those triggers try and creep back up, yeah. those past hurts, that unforgiveness, yeah. all of that stuff. I mean, we've got to pay attention to that. Right. When you feel those things, don't ignore them. Don't mm-hmm. overlook them. Yeah. Start to, okay, do the work. All right. I know what that, I feel that pinch. I feel that pinch of the past hurt that is trying to keep me from believing in the best, believing that I deserve God's best, believing that I can have a healthy relationship. Like, no, cut that out. But at the same time, don't overlook when you need some assistance. Good. Don't overlook when you you know that there, and I'm 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 feeling this right now. There are so many people out here walking around with unforgiveness, yeah. daddy issues, mama issues, past hurts from marriages, abuse, all yeah. of these different things. And it's keeping us from God's best. There's even stuff that's going on at work that's keeping you from God's best because you're so hurt. We got to stop walking around blind, blinded by our pain, y'all. Mm. It's making us make terrible decisions. Yeah. Mm. It's killing our hopes, our dreams, our futures, our children's futures because it's spewing out of us and on to them. Yeah. While y'all talk about who we put in first, like <laughs> your, your beliefs, your hurt, your pain, or your positivity spills out on your children as well. It affects your children as well. So y'all do the work. Let's do the healing. Let's stay positive. Let's stay hopeful. Let's start talking to the lady. Okay. <laughs> Let's start talking to the lady. Let's stay prayed up. I mean, it's so many things. That so, so what did you learn most talking to the lady about yourself? Because you advocate for her so much. You advocate about the process. You have uh, uh, talk about how much your growth has been. I hear her talk about partnering with you on this journey mm-hmm. to wholeness and, and healing. What did you learn most 
I learned most when I first started talking to her that I had so many open wounds that I was not healed in so many areas of my life. And there were things from daddy issues, mama issues, uh, work related issues, career stuff, you know what I mean, that was affecting me and my decisions in like my marriage at the time or just believing for the best. Yeah. Um, and there were a lot of hard lessons and I had to take some losses to gain uh, knowledge in those lessons. I mean, you know, but I, it has not been an easy journey. That's why I'm stuttering right now because I'm trying not to get emotional yeah, and I've had to live. I'm literally thinking about yeah. so many things that I've had to go through, yeah. overcome so many steps that I had to take. How many times I have bawled my eyes out on the phone with this lady um, having the bubble guts. Mm hmm. Do we know about that? Oh, yeah, we know. Oh, we know. Oh, we <laughs> feeling know. like, oh, my God, I am not going to make it through. I, have to, You know, oh, know, all of those different things. Yeah. I am sitting here going, wow. I now see the light at the end of the tunnel. I know that all of this has worked out for my good. I'm literally sitting in the room with my answered prayer. Yes. And so I want y'all to really understand that one, when you trust in God, when you do the work, when you start the healing process, when you forgive that person, yes. when you forgive those people, God will show up. Yes. He'll show up. He's always been there. He ain't never really left. Teach. You just, your heart was blinding you from seeing mm, his goodness. Okay. But understand that he is always working for your good. Always. He will always show you the other side of things if you let him but you got to trust and you got to allow him to 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 show up get out your own way man i always say man we in the driver's seat and we should really we should really be in the trunk man we should really be in the trunk of this thing we should allow god to have a pedal to the metal and get the driver's seat what i'm in the trunk i can what <laughs> wherever we're going wherever you're taking us guys yeah, so we're going. You. we should be in a trunk yeah y'all over there trying to use y'all imaginary break and it ain't working out for y'all okay get in the trunk man just allow god to lead is all i'm gonna say on that i saw the episode with you and your father on your show um why was it important to have him on there i thought that was so oh because powerful. he was the first man that broke my heart that's good he was the first man your father is supposed your earthly father is supposed to be the first man in your life. Yeah. To show you, you know, what it feels like to be loved by a man. And I have to we have to understand especially for my father's generation, they were getting married so early. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Keep, women were having children at 15, 16 yep. years old and then expecting this 16, 17 year old boy yep. to commit and be a husband. Yep. You know what I mean? When his daddy most of the time wasn't even there. Teach. And then because they got hurt in that relationship, then, you know, that's when the the bitterness started and, you know, men don't know how to act right. Yep. And, you know, daddy wasn't there and he ain't going to be there. He don't show all yep. of that starts. And I had to say, Wow, my father had me when he was 24 years old. What was I doing at 24 years old? Was I making the right decision? That part. Was I a grown up? Was I full? Had I lived enough life yet to bring a child into yeah. this world and then know how to, you know, be a proper parent to them? Yep. When I know my father didn't even know his father, but for a year, a year before my father met his father a year before he died. Mm. So he didn't know what a daddy looked like. So I felt like. I have to give this person grace. My father was a boy when he had me. My mother was a, a little, you know, a young girl. Now people say women mature faster, yeah, but, but you still, still we, they yeah. were kids they were when kids. they got married yep. and they stayed married 11 years. They tried longer than some of uh, us adults. That's in our thirties exactly. and forties. Exactly. So I felt like having that conversation would hopefully help to, mend someone's heart or start the yeah. forgiveness process, you know, with a father daughter relationship that's out there where they, and, it, and it did. I've had so many people come up to me and say, man, I called my father after watching that. Good. I cried my eyes out, but I finally called my dad. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what that 
whole conversation was about. When I say I salute you, that is so important. I remember I was 30 years old and I uh, I grew up with my dad. I, did, I said my dad had this unique ability um, with being present, absent at the same time. Yeah. You know, we shared the same address, but I never knew what his thoughts were. He never mm-hmm. came and communicated nothing mm-hmm. to me. He never taught me anything. I yeah. mean, absolutely anything. And so I was just like, man, my dad just, he's, he's present. And it was still better than what my friends had. They didn't even know who their dad was. And I said, well, my dad here. And they were envious of us. Yeah. But I was like, he don't. He don't be home half the time. Mm-hmm. And I, at 30 years old, I went and I sat on the side of his bed. I said, Dad, you know what? I forgive you for not meeting my expectations. Mm. I said, because in my mind, I had this expectation of what you're supposed to be. I was watching the Cosby show and I was like, hey, you know, this is what a father looks like. And this is what happens when they have money. Well, oh, well, okay, we don't have money. We grew up poor. Well, this is what a father looks like as James Evans. You know, at good times, maybe you can be that father. You know what I'm saying? And then I was wanting either of the two. And then I then I started saying, well, shoot, I wish that maybe I could be, I could have a Mr. Drummond. Maybe I could just get, just get adopted and have some rich white man give me the life that I wanted. But I never, ever saw my death fit my expectation mm, that was good. curated by television shows on what a father was supposed to be. And so I sat on the side of his bed. I said, Dad, I forgive you. He was yeah. like, he was like, what? I said, you know what? I was thinking about something. You don't even know who your dad is. Mm-hmm. Mm. And he was like, I said, does that bother you? He was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't even think about it no more. I don't even think about it. I said, yes, you do. He said, oh, no, I don't. You know, my uncles, you know, my, my uncles was like a father. I said, mm-hmm. Dad, that bothered you. Yeah. In 2020, it's a video on my uh, on my YouTube channel where my sister and I did research on Ancestry.com, found out who my dad was, my, my grandfather was, and my dad is 72 years old found out who his dad was. Wow. And he acted like a little boy. See? His his brothers and sisters came in from Houston. They they drove up during the uh, during the pandemic, the Father's Day weekend. I gifted my father with the knowledge of who his dad was, and I watched him act like a little boy. Wow. And my father who was never present in our home now has strong relationships with his other brothers and sisters that See? he never knew about, yeah. and I'm watching him thrive and flourish in ways that I've never seen him in yeah. 72 years. Yeah. And so I understand what those deep father wounds do to a male does to a daughter and at the end of the day if we have still have breath in our bodies brothers sisters because there's mothers out there too go ahead and give your kid the knowledge of who you are i know you have this ideology we saw kirk franklin find out who his dad was and how it's still a lot for him to unpack um but the reality is as long as you got air in your lungs and you've been asking god i just need a sign maybe i just need a sign to go ahead and reconnect with my child reconnect with my offspring well here's your sign call them up talk to them and give them the grace to bring you into their life the way they see fit don't force it uh but i guarantee you begin to put prayer over that thing god will open up that door strategically for you to be able to cultivate that relationship and Mm -hmm. and feel that hole in their heart uh how would you tell people People to transition as we get ready to wrap up um, people that have not been in their children's lives. What would you say to that man or woman um, that's walking in shame, walking in unforgiveness uh, to themselves? That's the greatest uh, unforgiveness that we carry is that when we don't forgive ourselves, how do you what word of encouragement would you give them to unpack that and try to help heal that whole? I would say the common denominator with all of us is that we are all children. Mm. We are all somebody's child. And regardless to if your parents were in your life or if they wasn't in your life, the one thing that we have to do is we have to humanize each other. I think we have this superhero complex for parents. Um, we also almost have it for our children. And like you said, they have this expectation. But the moment you humanize a person Mm -hmm. and you make them human, you also connect with their mistakes. There it is. You'll know that the connection is that none of us get it right all the time. Yeah. That we're not perfect. And the moment you can see your parents as a child, um, because I, too, am a child who came from a unwed mother. and, And my dad, he was Uh, I'd like to say consistently absent, right? Mm -hmm. But as I've gotten older as well, I made it my business to make sure that I made a connection with him as well. As a matter of fact, I just saw him on vacation. I went to Camden, South Carolina to go visit him and say hello. And I hadn't seen him in about 10 years. 10 years? 10 years. But I will tell you that when I look into my father's eyes, I see his humanity and I see me 
in yeah. him. Mm-hmm. And the thing that connects us together is just that one glare that says, man, he's a human. Um, he did the best that he could. Uh, my father lost his parents when he were very when he was very young, and so um, just having that human connection. And I say all the t- all the time that our biggest connection as humans is loss. Um, mm. We've all lost something, and we may not be able to experience all the great highs that the world wants to give us. But everybody can connect from a loss. And if you haven't had a relationship with your father or your child as a parent, and as a child you haven't had a relationship with your parent, the one thing that can humanize the two of you and bring you on the same plane is that you lost something so significant. And the way that we heal loss is that we bring it together as best we can, and we unite, and we come back, and we say, you know what, I am sorry, and no, I wasn't there and I could have done better parents it's okay to apologize to your children whether they're five or 55 sometimes they need to hear that validation they need to hear you say that you're sorry and that you did the best that you could with what you had and the best that you could with what you had was still hurtful Mm. my dad did yeah and I think I think because and I'll say this (laughs) It is our job is literally in the word that we are supposed to honor our mother and our father. That part. Right. And also, if you're a parent that's getting in the way of your child because of your pain, Teach. because of things didn't work out with y'all, if you're getting in the way of them honoring their father or honoring their mother, mm, mm-hmm. how is God looking at you about that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. The marital relationship is different than a mother and father relationship, two yeah. different relationships. So that we're just going to leave that there. But I think that God blessed me because I continue to honor my father, even though I was disappointed at times by my father. My father has been very accountable for his actions. He showed up. I've gotten the apology. He's told me, look, I did the best I could. My dad went on to be married three times or four times. I don't know. Daryl was a player. Um, <clears throat> he was in them streets. Three, but either five. way, three, four, hey, man, he like a good commitment. <laughs> Who that man like a good commitment? Huh? Okay, you know? <laughs> that man likes to hear some vows. But anyway. Um, he likes to say some vows. <laughs> he do. He, God bless him. But I got my apology. And I think it's because I I honored, I honored him. Yeah. You know, regardless of... What happened in our relationship, regardless yeah. of my disappointment, regardless of how many times he he wasn't there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but I, like I said, <laughs> don't y'all be getting in the way yeah. mm-hmm. of these kids honoring their mother and their father. And I feel like I'm also seeing my father be a better grandfather to my children than he was as, as a father is. to me you know what i mean yeah. he shows up as much as he possibly can he brings them toys it brings him joy to be around them to see yeah. them and he deserves that opportunity yeah. yeah he deserves that opportunity yeah so i i i'm feeling the love that i probably desired from him yeah. as my father i'm i'm getting that love by seeing him love on his grandkids the way that i do and let me piggyback off of that. Um, the same thing with my mom. She never spoke a ill word against my dad. Yeah. She made it her business to say, you have you know, as much contact that the two of you can create together now that you are an adult. And I'm completely out of it. But from the time I was a kid, um, you know, my dad bought my mom her first car. Um, and so it was it was things of that nature like he he wasn't at all the games but if I needed him I knew that I could call him and that carried on into my adult life Um, and I tell parents all the time you do not have to worry about the narrative the other parent is writing in the story of the life of your child Mm. so it's not up to you to interrupt that narrative and it's not my business it's not your business y'all it's not the kids business yeah it's not their business (laughs) what y'all if he didn't come home it's it's not. not his business how many time he cheated it's not D- 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 y'all, yeah. please, can I please, please, yeah. please stop making your children your therapist? Mm. Mm. I know sometimes they're the only ones around for you to talk to, but call the lady. Yeah. Call on the Lord yeah. before you talk to little Timmy, little John. And if he a junior, you named him a junior. <laughs> you may you name that baby after that man, so don't get mad at your decision. You did that. You did that. <laughs> 
Don't get okay. mad at your decisions. Don't get mad at your decisions. <laughs> yeah. But stop telling your kids all your business and getting trying to persuade them to not like yeah. their father or their mother because yeah. of y'all toxicity. Yeah. Because of what y'all went through in y'all relationship. It has an effect, a residual effect yes. on the child. Don't go talking to your, don't be having your your conversations with your girlfriend yeah. about how terrible they daddy is yeah. in front of your child when the child is in ears reach like stop each it's, parent will write their own police yeah. the, the, he going he's going to he's gonna write his own story, he's gonna write his own story. Yep. the child will find out in their own time Absolutely. now if he's an abuser yeah, and then, we then have, we'll that's a different story because yeah. we go get in trouble well I need to because he gonna <laughs> yeah. no 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 if he's an abuser that's a difference that's a different if he is physically abusive you know emotionally abusive emotionally abusive financially abusive, financially abusive, abusive, abusive that is a difference but they difference. may think emotional in the sense of a father saying i'm gonna go pick up my child on friday but he, he don't show up and all that stuff so she said i ain't letting him see his kids no more because he don't never come through you have to be consistent be consistent with your child either be consistently there or be consistently gone and either way, we can navigate either situation. If you are consistently there, then we can navigate that. But if you are consistently gone, we can navigate navigate that as well. Because the one thing that a child needs is it's stability, mm-hmm. regardless to what side mm-hmm. of the fence you're standing on. Just be consistent with that. Um, and again, you don't have to write any sort of narrative for the other parent. They yeah. will write their own out. story. Yeah. And the children will read it. The child will read the narrative on their own. And then you can guide them as as they are drawing whatever conclusion they need to draw mm-hmm. about Real. their parent. At the end of the day, the less you talk, the more God has opportunity to speak. Come, come and then both yes. hearts and oh, lives yeah. I'm can be it. reconnected when you it. when you talk less. If we talk, talk less, yeah. God can speak you just more. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Shut it up. And know that if you are doing what you're supposed to do, which is raising your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, then their heart's ear will be turned to the voice of the Lord. And if God needs to speak to them on any level, be it have this parent in your life or don't have this parent in your life, then the then the voice and the message won't be muddied by, by your, your message. Voice. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this yeah. all <laughs> yeah. ties into the choices you make in your relationship. So I know we just went down the rabbit <laughs> hole about childhood. <laughs> but your childhood helps you to make decisions yep. when you yep. you know get older and you want to have a relationship because of what you did see in your household Fair. and what you didn't. So yeah. here we are. And if you're using your experiences as in your childhood, um, I always say that if ever we are using our experiences, it usually swings the pendulum from one margin to the next. And so we say, well, I don't want no man like this. And so you go all the way on the other side. And I say the only thing that lives in the margins of our lives is pain and toxicity. It's called trauma. So you don't want to live in the margins. You want to kind of live in the middle. Right. Mm. So there are some really good things that you've seen about your parent, whether they were there or, or they weren't there. A good thing about your parent is you because yeah. you own half of their DNA. Right. So if ever you are looking at your because it happens on the good side as well. Oh, my parents marriage was perfect. Mm. It was absolutely perfect. And I want it to look just like this. And yeah. then you get into your situation and it's not looking like your parents relationship because your parents marriage was not perfect. They just did a really good responsible job of ensuring that whatever you saw there in their it marriage, it was healthy for you. So what you saw was a healthy relationship. You did not see a perfect one. Teach. So you don't want to swing that pendulum all the way on the other side because then you meet somebody and you'd be like well this is not the perfect picture that my <laughs> parents is. had and I don't want to deal with you because you don't put your socks in the in the laundromat mm-hmm. and my mama and my, uh, my daddy, daddy put always put his, his socks, socks in there and you didn't know why you were sleeping your mama was fussing and putting those socks in the dirty clothes there hammer. It is. so if you use your parents uh, marriage not necessarily as a mirror but as a model it allows you to build a structure and it's a blueprint and sometimes your structure may look a little different but what you want to make sure that the foundation and the studs are the same good studs i don't want to end this interview without uh giving you kudos um toya you want to look over there um of course i've learned about your character through one of my close friends sharice hey Uh, yeah so sharice um she she i mean from a couple years ago y'all began to get real close and she was Mm -hmm. just like 
this woman is a really genuine, genuine, Aww. cool person or whatnot. Uh, and so it's interesting. My One of my closest friends have now become my first lady at my church. Sure you know enough. what I'm saying? She's a whole first lady out a here. A whole first lady. Yeah, whole first lady. <laughs> okay. But what's so dope about it is how y'all both have kids by the same man and y'all are able to have such a healthy relationship. Family. That is absolutely beautiful. When you look at the big picture and you take the emotion out of it, take the emotion, the feelings, all of the things out of it, we're a family. Our kids are brother and sister. Teach. And it doesn't have to be drama there. Teach. I don't know who wrote the rule book of you're supposed to act a certain way because... (laughs) What? (laughs) No. You don't have to be ugly because things got ugly. Yeah, Yeah. You don't have to remain ugly, bitter, and have these feelings towards a person... Just because things didn't work out. Yeah. At the end of the day, we want our kids to see healthy relationships. And y'all doing an amazing job with that because it's like, like you look at her daughter as your daughter. Still. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my baby and I'm going to go see her and that's my baby Still. and that's my, I say, that's we'll never how change. it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. And so thank y'all Love for Madison. leading by example and, and modeling what healthy looks like. Yeah. Because we don't often, oftentimes we'll get a chance to see that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? We don't, we, don't, we don't get to see that at all, to be honest, which I've never saw that. And so just to hear her talk about that, I was like, I want to meet Toya. Yeah. I, 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 I love amazing. that. I love that thank y'all you. have this great uh, relationship like that. And so y'all just keep cultivating that beautiful thing that y'all have. Um, y'all are wonderful and children. And we will. Yeah, because yeah. y'all y'all both crazy. Um, you know what? Yeah. See, yeah. why it's the truth. Because I just tell, tell, tell the truth. I just got to tell the truth, Toya. How you yeah. go from a compliment? It's, it's, it's a compliment. It's still a compliment. It's yet rolling. Is it yeah. Vaseline and tennis shoes still Oh, God. It's over there. I have a fight therapist. See a fight therapist. There she is. You got to get delivered from that. I'm just saying. You got to get delivered from that. So, um, how do people connect? I know that people heard you. I don't know what your 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 case low, work low, whatever you want to call it, is like right now. Because on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, if I bring a therapist, anybody in the mental health profession, they like and they dropping gems like you're doing. They like, I need her. I need her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so. Do you have room in the end for, uh, for <laughs> is there a room in the end? There is for yet people? room. There's room. There's yet room. How do people connect with you? You will connect with me at gracefuljourneycounseling.com or yourstartingovercoach.com. I have openings for my coaching program. It's a six week starting over um, program. And while you are at the end of the year and we're about to walk into this new That's year, good. this is a great time for you mm-hmm. to get the skills and everything that you need to start over because this time you will not be starting from scratch. You'll be starting from experience she practiced that in the mirror she did she had to before she, she got yeah, here she was in the mirror what is she in the mirror doing that from, from experience from experience from, from maybe from I should drop ready. that down a little yeah. be yeah. ready from experience. experience I stay she ready yeah. I stay ready <laughs> folks yeah, there it is she practiced that in the window in the mirror about 15 like times I did I did I told you what you got going on Hey man, I'm on strike. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I forgot y'all on strike. I am a SAG member and yeah. I am being a good mom to my kids, yeah, take them, yeah. taking them to school. I finally have time. Like I'm yeah. like, I have time to be the mom that I've always wanted to be. That's like good. waking up, making the sandwiches and taking them to school. Can you cook toy? I choose to make a reservation. <laughs> um I can actually cook. <laughs> I promise y'all I can cook. I just, I'm, t- I feel like I'm too greedy. I, <laughs> by the time the 30, 40 minutes is up, by the time something boiled or broiled, I could have ordered that. <laughs> you know, so God is, but you know what? God is leading me to the kitchen more often. And I am, I feel like, because I, I, I love that my kids love to watch me cook. They do. It's love in the food. When they're watching you make it, they're like, yeah. "Ooh, I can't wait to get it." You know, they, they cool. get excited when DoorDash shows up. But I do feel <laughs> like <laughs> I want to get in the kitchen more often, so that you know, I I can cook for them more. I, I really do. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I just hate going to the grocery store. I'm sorry. Look here. I'm saying. <laughs> I understand. I, I get in the grocery store and I'm like, I don't know what is all it, this. There'd be a lot going on. What is this? You what, know? What's, so, what's so dope about you is that you're multi-talented. So when you look at, um, you got one industry on strike right now. What mm-hmm. about the music career? Any, any? I've been doing a lot of live performances. So Good. recently I've been back on stage performing my songs and uh, that feels good. That yeah. feels so good. Um, but, you know, 
I I have other things going on hosting. Good. Um, just you gonna, you gonna just, bring your show back on YouTube. We are talking about things. Okay. You know me. I, I don't. I don't confirm things until, until you get some money. the check is cut. Yeah. Until the, until the, check, until the, the check. contract <laughs> is signed, <laughs> ink is dry, and the check, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I do want to say I cut. enjoyed it. I, I love seeing Thank you in that light and have conversations because you was just always present, and it's just it was great. It's a great look for you. Thank you. I, yeah. Listen, I have no. I believe that God put me on this earth to help heal Good. and. If you haven't been through nothing yeah. and haven't, that means you haven't healed from nothing, Teach. which means you don't have nothing to share talk about. about or talk about. Yeah. So I feel like the things that I've been through and I feel like I've been through a lot. Um, I I love the opportunity to share my my experiences, but also to show that you can be resilient and, and come out on the other side of things. I'm still standing. Let me ask you this. Was that hard so, to do? What? To the actually show? just be vulnerable and share and share oh, stuff yeah. that you ain't never shared with people. Some, at, at first it was because yeah. I'm a very private person. Remember, soft launch. So <laughs> soft I launch. I am a soft launcher, and <laughs> I feel as though you know my private life is my private life. So of course, when it came time, you know, for me to talk about my children and talk about relationships, when I bought my ex on and we went through, I didn't know how that was gonna work out. Wow, because you know he's fun. Oh yeah, yeah. And I. I yeah. was like, how fun are we going to be in this episode? Are you episode? talking about what slim thug? Yeah. Oh, that, I, I, that I was, enjoyed that episode. That was so good. It yeah. ended up being so good. So, yeah. you know, it is. I have no issue with being transparent, being honest. I think that's just the type of person that I am. Um, so I think that's why the, ser- the series worked out. And I had fun with it. And I will continue to have fun with it. But... Yeah, man. I don't well, like good. I don't like lying. That's good. I like yeah, being honest and transparent. And it's freedom. It, it is. It's, it's, it's therapy for me. Yeah. Absolutely. When yeah. I get to share and get that stuff out, don't let it hold it. Don't hold it in, y'all. Don't. Let me tell y'all. I enjoyed you, Toya. I enjoyed you, Toya. It's been an amazing Thank discussion, you. amazing Thank conversation. You. Love y'all personality. Yeah. Uh Enjoyed it, and I just I just wish the best for y'all. I want y'all to continue inheriting everything that God has predestined for y'all. Thank you. Uh, y'all are walking gifts. Y'all are walking epistles, um, and it's just amazing to see what God has been doing in your life and what what was yet to be seen. Uh, but she she done messed you up when she said that you was a wife. Y'all saw the sm- did yeah. you hear the mucus? Yeah, I heard you. Like, <laughs> and I ain't been able to get rid of it since. <laughs> Whole rest of the interview, I was like, if I could just step outside and go call <laughs> some up. You should have the time out. You should I do like was, this. The, the mucus was building. And I was out. like, I can't cry on this show. Man. But I wanted to so badly. But then I would have had the little light. Like, see, yeah. y'all wouldn't talk about me. <laughs> a little tear down that, there. Yeah, it was going to be an ugly cry too, y'all. <laughs> it was going to be ugly. It's good. How yeah. can people connect with you? Tell social media on social media Instagram. Instagram now if you ain't got nothing nice to say don't y'all come over here now okay not just, okay I'm, you, I you love be people told you. what it's a gift you're in the block ministry I am a part of the <laughs> I am a leader in the block industry I enjoy president. it okay um, and I'm a repulsion <laughs> I'm gonna do all the thing. When they ask you, do you want to dis? Was it disrespect? Was it this? Was it yes? I'm checking all the boxes. So you'll you, you be reporting. And by the time I'm done with you, you ain't gonna have no account. So just leave me alone. And I, I'm so glad the people, <laughs> a majority, are fond of me and and bring nothing but positivity. And I thank you. But for those few that decide to try it, understand that you're gonna be blocked and report it. And I'm going to enjoy it in the name, in the mighty name (laughs) of Of the one who sits high and looks low. (laughs) Sits up high. Oh, God. He's so crazy. at LaToya Lucky, and don't y'all go spelling my name with no A. It's Mm L-E-capital-T-O-Y-A-L-U-C-K-E-T-T. And there it is. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all give it up for today's guest. Thank y'all so <laughs> much for joining us. Ain't you glad about the lady? I'm glad you brought the lady. I need I'm glad her. I'm here. Well, I, I need, need an apology. I need an on-air apology. All right, apology on-air apology. For listen, trying to make me feel like I wasn't brave. All right, all right let me just go here. Toya is the first person to bring her therapist on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that that was a little uh, interesting, to mm. say the least. Oh, interesting. Um, and yeah, I'm using interesting. Okay. okay. This is my apology, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, it's interesting. <laughs> it was interesting that she brought her therapist. I had no understanding why she would do that. Mm. Um, I felt like, mm-hmm. you know, she could have sit down and talk. She sits on her show and talk yeah. um, by herself. Uh-huh. And, but then she wanted to bring an accomplice. It's getting long. Uh, this is my it's apology, Toya. This is my long. apology. I'm sharing my heart. 
out right now. We and so, um, and so, I wonder why she would bring somebody on the show to to sit alongside of her as she shares her truth. Um, and so the she music. decided to start rolling to, uh, bring the award her therapist music? on the podcast, and I thought it was music, very uh, odd that she would do such a thing. Should we start rolling? And so I just want to say, I'm sorry. Toya, Are there credits for, to be rolled? Um, Underestimate you. Done with so that. I apologize. Yeah, are we? Are we done? Yeah, that, I apologize. That's it. You're done. Yes, I said. Thank you. Okay. Apology yeah, accepted. Yeah, you're welcome. Finally. I, I said it for my heart. I am old and gray. She's over here <laughs> humming hymns, and I, you know, at this point, <laughs> I don't know what's left. Don't stand by me. Are there no wigs left? Back come by me. me. Yeah, your wig. The wig my, is back there. The, yeah. Your wig. My wig was lit up. <laughs> I had to pull out an old Shout out Negro to my girl. <laughs> All right, she done pulled out yes. the Negro spiritual. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, Yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just two many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. 
crown a king, and make a donation today. Such an honor to have had Latoya Luckett on the podcast. I've uh, been wanting to talk to her for a minute. And it was just a bonus to have uh, the lady, <laughs> her amazing therapist on the podcast. It's just... I, I like that. I had a whole lot of fun, and I hope you guys had a whole lot of fun watching it. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, therapy, therapy, therapy. Therapy will be one of the pillars of our marriage. Babe, we will always keep it 1,000 with each other. Tell me when my breath stinks type of realness. We will always know we have nothing but the best intentions for one another. Laughter will be the soundscape of our home. Our sanctuary will be the triangle love affair between the two of us and our Heavenly Father. Take a breath, a deep breath, and rest in our love. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.